This video was sponsored by Stamps.com. You guys, I'm stressed out. I have one week, I have to build two bathroom vanities. Yes, not one, but two bathroom vanities. One week. I don't know if I can do it. I'm gonna try my best. And you guys can come along and make fun of me as I hustle my buns off. So, enough talking. Let's get to work. Subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that. Play the music. So whenever I'm doing cabinets, I like to sketch them up first on my computer. And to do that, I use a program called SketchUp, because I know you're gonna ask. No, this isn't an ad for SketchUp, that's just the program I use. So here is the vanity. Well, the first one. There's also this other one over here. That's right, two vanities at the same time, one week. And you see that one's got three levels of drawers and this one's got two. That's because the small one's got a regular marble top, and this big boy has this crazy waterfall marble top on it. So I had to build out this front box area that you can see there. So after taking a look at my designs, I made up a cut list. Isn't it beautiful? As you can see, all of my pieces are the exact same width, 20 and a quarter, which will make cutting them up nice and easy. So I went over and started hugging, apparently, some giant sheets of Baltic birch. Because that's what we're build. Oh my goodness, Jason. Whew. You almost squished yourself there. Let's just slow down, everybody. Take a deep breath and start over. You're okay. <laughs> All right. Where was I? That's right. I took my birch plywood over to the table saw and I started ripping down a bunch of pieces at 20 and a quarter. Like I mentioned, all of my internal dividers and tops and sides are all 20 and a quarter, so this is gonna be super simple to cut all my parts out. After ripping down a bunch of pieces at 20 and a quarter, I just went over to the miter saw and I cut them down to length. This is usually how I break down plywood because I'm too lazy to use the track saw or any other method. And with the stop block set up on the fence, you can still get a nice accurate cut by doing it this way. After cutting out all of my pieces, I labeled each piece because they're all slightly different sizes and height and I didn't want to get anything confused. So this is what the internal structure of our cabinet is gonna look like. We've got our two outside pieces, our two middle dividers that separate our different drawer sections. Got a bottom piece and a couple brace pieces on the top. Now if you zoom in, you can see that the bottom piece hooks into this little rabbit on either side. That's just gonna make a nice strong glue joint. And then each internal divider is set in place with a dado and glued as well to make everything super strong. Then I got some brace pieces on the top, holding all the dividers nice and square. I got another brace piece or nailer strip down at the bottom on the back side. And then if we zoom back out here, you'll see that we have another brace piece on the top. Now this is actually gonna serve two functions. Yes, it's gonna be a brace piece and make our cabinet nice and secure. But if I pull this little piece out here, you'll see that the bottom of that is cut with a 45 degree angle. That's because this vanity is gonna be floating off the floor. So this is essentially gonna become our French cleat and hang the cabinet off the wall. If you don't understand how in the world that works or what I'm talking about, well, don't worry. I'll explain it all later on in the video. We just have to wait to find out. So that's the general plan for both of our vanities. They'll be built the exact same way. So with our parts all cut to the right size, it is time to start hooking these two beasts together. Let's go! First, I start by taking my four side panels, and as I showed in the SketchUp drawing, I add a little rabbit to the bottom edge of each side piece. Just quick and simple with a three-quarter inch dado in my dado saw. Then I take a close look at my drawing on the computer and I start marking out where all those internal dados need to go to hold my divider pieces. I just mark them with a pencil and a ruler and I draw a straight line across the piece. We'll come back in a little bit and cut all these out with the router. And not with a wireless router, with like 
this kind of router. I tried cutting dados with a wireless router one time, and I don't think that's the right kind of router. Anyways, because these dados are going to go all the way through my bottom piece, I took some scrap pieces of ply and I sandwiched my bottom piece in between those two scrap pieces. These are essentially waste boards so that I can pass the router all the way from front to back and I don't have to worry about tear out and it gives me a nice clean cut. Now I have this fancy expensive Festool router and track system so I use that to cut all my dados but you could do the exact same thing with just a plain old router and a really straight 2x4. Just go slow, take your time, and in no time you will have beautiful dados in which to set your dividers. So with the bottom piece done, it was, well, back to looking at the computer. Now you see on the SketchUp drawing that I did, I made these little notches on the back. This was to hold my bottom brace piece and I left a little space on the top for the French cleat. But after thinking about it, I decided that whole notch was just pointless and stupid. There was no reason to take the extra time to cut out the notch. It really served no function. So instead of making a notch, I just lopped a full three quarters of an inch off the back of each one of my divider pieces. And I'm gonna try and forget I had that stupid notching idea to begin with. I mean, it's not stupid, you could do it. It's just kind of pointless. You might as well just tack your brace pieces right on the back and move on with your life. So after lopping that three quarters of an inch off, I sneezed, apparently. And then I added a little glue to the bottom of each one of those dados and I hammered my divider pieces in place. Now I made sure that this is a nice tight fit with those divider pieces, which means that you don't need to put any clamps or screws or nails in there. Just put a bunch of glue and make sure it's square and let it sit and dry. It'll be plenty strong just like that. So while I waited for those internal dividers to dry up, I added my side pieces. Now for these, they are a little awkward and they're not a friction fit, so you are gonna have to do something to hold them secure until that glue dries. These little 90 degree clamping things from woodpeckers work great when you're trying to put boxes together by yourself but I'm too impatient to just let that sit and wait for glue to dry. So I also added a few brad nails just to hold everything nice and secure, essentially acting as the clamps while the glue set up. And once I got one side done, I moved over and finished the other side. And with that, our cabinet box is almost finished. We just have to add a few other support pieces on the top and side, and of course, make our French cleat to hook onto the back. For this, I'm just using all my leftover pieces of plywood for making my original panels. I just rip them down to three and a half inches, and then I take a few of those pieces and I cut that nice 45 degree angle, which will, of course, be our French cleat. Still confused about what a French cleat is? Don't worry, I'm gonna tell you. Just wait, it's later on in the video. With all of our support pieces cut, I spread some glue around to plop them in place. Now lots of times when I'm building cabinets, I will use screws to hook everything together. But because these two vanities are gonna be sandwiched in between two supporting walls, you just don't need the screws because the cabinet literally can't go anywhere. So for this, I'm just using glue and a 16 gauge brad nailer, and I'm not giving it another thought. It's gonna work great. But before you nail the support pieces into your dividers, you do wanna make sure that they are square. You don't wanna sink some nails in there and then find out that they're a little lopsided because, well, that's gonna throw everything else off and you just don't wanna do that. So after putting the support piece on the bottom, it was time to attach the French cleat. I just forgot to change the focus on my camera, so the entire shot looks about like this. So fast forwarding, I just glued and nailed it to hold it in place. Now because this is the entire support hanging system for the cabinet, all the weight is going to be suspended off this one piece pretty much, I decided to use a little more than glue and brad nails. I know I gave that whole speech a second ago about how that's all you need, but I got scared. What can I say? So I secured the French cleat to each divider piece and in from the outside with a couple of GRK wood screws. 
And then the very last support piece we're gonna put is on the very front of the cabinet. This is just gonna ensure that all those center dividers are square, as well as give us a nice surface to attach our face frame to. For this, I went back to the glue and the brad nailer, because I ain't got time for more screws. And boom, the carcass for our first smaller vanity is done, and we are ready to move on to the big one. The long one, the big boy, the big papa. Pshoo, pshoo. And I'm gonna spare you watching this entire process because I'm not lying when I say I built this exactly the same way as the first one. The only difference is it's a little longer, which means more dividers, and because this is gonna have a waterfall marble top, I had to build some sort of box at the top of the cabinet for the marble to rest on. So I just ripped down a piece of three quarter inch ply that is gonna be perfectly level and even with my face frame, and I just glued and tacked it on there. I'll let the marble guys take it from here. That is way above my pay grade. And cowabunga, in less than a day, I managed to get both of my cabinet boxes complete for my small and large vanities. Next up, we gotta do all of our face framing, just to make everything look nice and purdy. But before we do that, why don't I take a minute to explain how this whole French cleat thing works. Now you see, this is what our back support piece looks like. It's attached up there with a 45 degree pointed down. Then we're gonna take another piece with a 45 degree and attach it to the wall with the point sticking out. Now, when we set the cabinet on that piece attached to the wall, they're gonna kiss like this, essentially making a perfect cleat that locks together and is super strong. So hopefully that clears up any French cleat questions you might have. With our cabinet boxes done, it is time to start constructing the face frame. Now the smaller vanity is gonna be made out of oak and just have a clear coat on it, clean and simple. So I ripped down a bunch of oak to two and a quarter inches. I don't know why, I just always like making face frames out of two and a quarter inch stock. It just looks like a good size. So after cutting all my pieces to the correct measurement, I start laying them out on the box itself just to make sure everything's fit in the way that it should. Now there's not gonna be any drawer dividers in this. I'm just gonna hang two or three drawers in each one of those sections with nothing dividing them up as far as the face frame is concerned which means that this face frame is super simple. We just got our top rail, our bottom rail, and a couple of vertical dividers. And that's it. So to hook these together, I pulled out my old trusty friend, the Craig Jig, and I started throwing some pocket holes in there. Two pocket holes on each end. We'll follow that up with a little glue, and this face frame will be looking great in no time. I always like to assemble my face frame flat on my work table just by clamping the joint down so that it can't slide as I screw it together. I start by doing all of my outside pieces to essentially just create a border or a frame. And then once those are all hooked together, I come back and do all of my internal pieces. And let me tell you something about adding your internal pieces. Throw your tape measure out the flipping window. You're not gonna need it, it's just gonna screw you up. Instead, cut some spacer pieces the exact length of whatever your opening is. Do two, one at the top, one at the bottom, and put your internal pieces flush up against that. This is going to eliminate the guesswork in wondering if your pieces are put in square. They can't not be square doing it this way, so it's foolproof. After I got my oak face frame all put together, I laid it on top of my box just to make sure that it would fit the way it's supposed to which it did. Now because this is gonna get a clear coat, I really didn't wanna put a bunch of brad nails through the outside of it that would be visible. So instead, I threw some more pocket holes on the inside of the carcass, for which to whom henceforth we can hook on thy face frame. Probably should have thought through how I was gonna say that before I just started talking. Man, I really gotta spend more time on these voiceovers. Anyways, with my pocket holes all drilled out, I added some glue to the plywood, 
plopped on my face frame and clamped it in place. Now I always like to add the glue when the cabinet is on its back like this so the glue doesn't run all over the place. But after getting the face frame clamped on, it is much easier to work with those pocket holes when it's sitting in the upright position. So I take it over to my workbench, throw on a few more clamps just to hold everything nice and tight, and start screwing the face frame to the cabinet box, hence via thy what is known as ye pocket holes. Okay. Once I screwed the face frame on in its entirety, I removed the clamps and sanded down the face frame just to get rid of any glue that was left behind in the whole joining process with the pocket holes. And that cabinet box is faced and awaiting drawers and drawer faces. Now, I believe we are building two vanities, are we not? But again, there's no point in showing you the exact same process over again. It was duplicate to the first one. The only difference with this was that I slimmed down the face frame on this cabinet to an inch and a half. I don't know why. I just always like an inch and a half for face frame width. It just looks like a good width. So uh, actually I was trying to maximize the amount of storage that we could get into this cabinet. So by slimming it down an inch and a half, it actually added a lot of storage. Now this cabinet is going to be painted. So I didn't take the time to throw the pocket holes in there. I just added some glue, tacked it down with a brad nailer, filled all the nail holes and gave it a good sanding. You will never be able to tell once it's painted. So why waste your time and have to touch a Craig jig more than you need to? Ain't nobody want to do that. This video was sponsored by stamps.com. Now, I'm a woodworking business, so you might think that I don't have to ship a lot of stuff in my line of work, but you're wrong, because you awesome people keep getting on my website and ordering things like t-shirts and motivational posters and the like. So, I have to go to the post office all the time. It stinks, because you go inside, you gotta wait in line, there's strange people there, some of them smell kind of funny. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. The important thing is that I don't have to do that anymore ever since I found stamps.com. They bring the convenience of the US Postal Service and UPS right to your fingertips on your computer. The other thing I love about stamps.com is they're always coming out with new tools to make your life easier, like their new rate advisor tool. It lets you compare shipping rates and timelines so that you can find the best option that works for you. Now, if that's not handy, I don't know what is. Well, maybe this hand plane, <laughs> but that's because it's a hand plane. So it's also handy. It doesn't matter if you're a small business or a big business, maybe you're just a hobbyist or you just like to collect small collectible figurines. I don't know what you do, but stamps.com has you covered and you don't even need any special equipment. Just a computer and a printer and you're ready to print postage. Just get online, do your thing, and when you're ready to ship, you can either schedule a pickup or drop it off. No traffic, no lines, no weird, awkward conversation with the dwellers at the post office. Save time and money with www.stamps.com. There's no risk and you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to www.stamps.com slash bourbon moth for your four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. That's www.stamps.com slash bourbon moth. Never go to the post office again. With our cabinets built and faced, it is time to start thinking about installing drawer slides. Now when I designed these cabinets, I made sure that the face frame perfectly lined up with the edge of our plywood dividers in as many places as they could. But that meant there was this gap on the other side of the face frame where the plywood didn't match up. Now because I'm doing inset drawers, I had to make sure that my drawer slide perfectly lined up with the face frame, which meant that I needed to add a few spacer blocks inside the cabinet to bring out that side wall flush with the face frame and give me a good surface to mount the slide itself. Luckily for me, because I was doing inch and a half face frames and three quarter inch plywood, that meant on the other side, all I had to do was slap in a piece of three quarter inch ply 
and boom, I had a perfect area on which thy hence forth could mount thy drawer slide. Now, whenever I'm putting blocking in like this, I always like to plan ahead. Don't just throw it in there in some random location. Do it in a way that's gonna make installing your drawer slides as easy as possible, which means I set the height of those blocks exactly the height that I want the top of my drawer slide. So now I don't even have to measure when I put the drawer slides in. I just line it up with the top of that blocking and screw it on. Now, unfortunately, things are a little more complicated on my smaller vanity than the larger one. Because I used two and a quarter inch face frame thickness, there was a bigger gap from the edge of the face frame to the divider, which meant that I would have had to put a lot of blocking in there. Or I could just use these brackets that came with the drawer slides themselves, attach them to a little piece and set them on the back of the cabinet, set them on the back of the cabinet, and then add another little piece just with some pocket holes on the front. Now I don't have to do that on the middle because I did perfectly line that up with the internal dividers. But as you can see, just put that little piece on the front, put my little tabs on the back, slide my drawer slide in place, line it up where I want it to be, and add a couple screws. Installed. Now people are always asking, where did you get these drawer slides? I can't find them anywhere. Well, you're obviously not looking in the right place. Go to rockler.com. They have them in every size you want and they have them at a terrific price. So I'll put a link down in the video description so you don't have to whine in the comment section anymore. As you can see with those clips on the back and my support piece on the front, installing all of these drawer slides was, well, as quick as one, two, three. In no time, I had all the drawer slides installed on my smaller vanity. Now you can see there's no drawer slide on the upper part of that middle section. That's because there's gonna be a sink there and we're gonna have to put in a false drawer front because, you know, the drawer would run into the sink. We don't, however, have that problem on this vanity because we had to create that false box on the top to make room for the marble waterfall. Well, that's gonna give us plenty of room for the sink so we can just do drawers all the way across. Which with our drawer slides installed, it is time to measure up and start building some drawer boxes. Now, I feel like at this point, I've done at least six videos where I have to build drawers for some reason. And I do a pretty good job of walking you through my drawer construction method in most of those videos. So instead of giving you some long, detailed, step-by-step -step process, I'm just gonna post a little link at the top to a video that will show you in detail exactly how I make my drawer boxes. But the short gist of it is I rip a bunch of pieces of Baltic birch ply down on the table saw. Yes, Baltic birch ply makes wonderful drawer boxes. I add a quarter inch dado to the bottom of each piece to hold my drawer bottom. I cut all the pieces down to the correct size. I cut out a quarter inch sheet of Baltic birch for my drawer bottom. And, oh, okay. I cut out another sheet of Baltic birch ply for my drawer bottom. And then I take all of my pieces that I just cut and I start putting them together. Bottom, side, side, glue. Then I add a top. I tack it in with some 16 gauge brad nails that I will fill and sand later. And yeah, that's about it. Here is a drawer box. Took me all of about 10 minutes to make. This is actually not even sped up. I just drank a cup of coffee and started going to town. As you can see, you can make a lot of drawers really quickly. But unfortunately, all the drawers are not the same. This section is going to have a sink. Same on the other side of this vanity, which means that the drawers have to account for the drain coming down off the bottom of the sink. So I had to figure out a way to make not your typical drawer box. This was going to be more like a horseshoe or the letter U, or a U-turn. Man, there's not a lot of great ways to describe this shape without using the word U, is there? Anyways, I basically altered the back of the drawer box to look like this. I cut the bottom panel to look like this. 
I slid the bottom panel into the back of the drawer box like this. Nice, tight fit. I added on my sides and well I glued the whole thing together and tacked it in place just like I build all of the other drawer boxes. The only difference is this one's got a giant hey now it looks more like a C doesn't it? A C box as you can see. Anyways I just hook it together the exact same way as the other drawers with the exception of this whole back U shape. Then with all my drawer boxes complete I add these little Blum undermount orange clippy doohickeys that hook the drawers into the undermount drawer slides and I plop the drawer in place. Hopefully these will work perfect to accommodate for the sinks that will be on either side and fit nicely around the pipes. Believe it or not we had to do the exact same thing on our smaller vanity as well. See, typically you'd put cabinets in the middle and you wouldn't have to worry about any of this. But the client, AKA my wife, really likes the look of all drawers. So of course I was left to figure out the details. I'm not complaining. It's not that big a deal. It's not like I'm trying to run a YouTube channel or anything. I got plenty of time, sure, yeah, I can. Anyways. With all of our drawer boxes completely built and installed, it was time to start making our drawer faces. Now for the larger vanity, like I mentioned, it is going to be painted, so I started ripping down a bunch of poplar. I usually use poplar for paint grade pieces because believe it or not, poplar paints great. That's all I have to say about that. Now, somewhere along this build process, my miter saw stopped working. So I had to pull out my contractor DeWalt saw to cut all of my rails and styles. But I managed to get it done regardless of that stupid saw breaking. Anyways, with all my rails and styles cut, I had to add a quarter inch groove down the center of each one to hold our floating panel. Now the easiest way to get it perfectly centered is to run an eighth inch on one side, flip it around and run an eighth inch on the other side. That way every single groove is gonna be perfectly in the middle. You can't, you can't mess it up. Then with all of our grooves cut, it was time to start cutting our tenons to fit inside those grooves. For this, I just went over to my dado saw with a sacrificial fence and I cut a perfect three quarter inch long tenon that should work to hook all of our frames together. Somewhat like this. Now when you're doing these, you wanna make sure you have a nice tight fit. Not so tight that it's gonna crack that groove, but tight enough that it stays together on its own. A nice friction fit. And I like to leave just a little gap at the end of my tenon to allow glue to fill inside there. A lot of people ask, well how do you know if it's tight enough or not? Well, this is how you tell. You hold it up and you giggle through it. <laughs> no, actually, that's not what I was trying to say. You put the whole thing together like so, and if you can pick it up with just the friction fit and it stays in the correct orientation without slouching or moving, well, you know you have a perfect fit. Now for a panel, I'm gonna be using this quarter inch birch ply. Typically, when I do drawer faces, I like to use half inch MDF and I wrap it out a little channel on the outside of the entire piece. This makes it so it's like an inset panel on the front but flat on the back. I love doing it that way. Problem is I didn't have any MDF in my shop and I was in a hurry and didn't want to run out and buy any. So I just went with the quarter inch birch panel. This is a totally acceptable way of doing drawer faces. It's just not the way I normally do it but that's okay. I can adapt, I can change, I can go with the flow. Now another benefit to having a nice tight fit on all your pieces is that you don't need clamps for assembly. You just put some glue in each joint, squeeze it nice and tight like a hug from your Aunt Martha, wipe off the excess glue and set it aside. The friction is enough to hold the entire thing together until the glue dries and you're not going to risk kind of tweaking it out of square by putting some clamps on one side or the other. The next morning I came out and just lightly sanded each drawer face 
first with a power sander and then by hand on my internal frame panel area. And then finally it was time to start attaching our drawer slides. Nope, that's not right. Our drawer faces to our drawer boxes. Whenever I'm doing inset drawer faces like this, I'm a big advocate of using playing cards. They make the perfect spacing shims. You can just dial it up or down with the number of cards to get the perfect reveal all the way around. And by counting cards, not like the way I count cards when I'm in Vegas, but by counting out the number of cards, you can ensure that the reveal is exactly even all the way around. So I just put the cards in to get the right reveal. I take out my upper panel once I know everything is spaced out correctly. I add some clamps to hold the drawer face on and then a few screws from inside my drawer box holds the drawer face firmly to the drawer box and it is seated absolutely perfect. Spaced nice and even all the way around. So I continue this process on down the line. A little card counting, a little shimming, a little clamping, a little screwing, and boom, all of our drawer faces are on and looking clean. Now I decided not to do shaker style panel doors for the smaller vanity. Instead, I opted for just solid pieces of oak. I thought it looked nice and clean and it just changed things up from the other vanity but we still needed to install our false drawer face where our sink is gonna go. The only problem is there's nothing to attach it to with the inset drawers. So I just cut a piece of scrap plywood with some pocket holes on either end. Now you wanna make this piece really, really tight, like tight enough that you really have to wedge it in there. And the reason is, well, You'll see why in just a second. It just makes installing your fake panel and getting it perfectly lined up with your lower drawers so much easier. What you're gonna do is wedge it in place and bring it all the way to the front. Then you're gonna set your fake panel in there. Now it sticks out a little far, but using a mallet, you're just gonna tap, tap, tap each side until that panel is perfectly flush with your lower two drawer faces. Once you get it to the correct location, you just reach inside and attach it to the inside of your cabinet box via those pocket screws. Now, we gotta cover up the sides of this support piece a little bit because you might see them through the reveals on either side of that fake panel. So for this, I just take a good old Sharpie and I color a nice black line on either side. I mean, anything will work, dark stain, paint, earwax, just something to darken up that light wood so it doesn't stand out on either side of your fake drawer panel there. Then you're gonna install it the exact same way that you would a drawer face. Just wedge some cards in there to get your reveals right and sink some screws from the back right into the panel. Now, unfortunately, because I was trying to build two frickin' vanities in one week, I don't have time to show you any of the finishing process in this video. Heck, I don't even have time to finish them myself right now. But the important part is that you now know how they are constructed and you should be able to make your own vanities, floating or not. You could use this exact same method to make a regular vanity with a toe kick. All you gotta do is build a toe kick and shove it under there. <laughs> I'm back here. Well, I did it. Two vanities, one week. Now, I still have some finishing work to do on these. I'm actually gonna send this one out to be painted by somebody who's not me, because I hate painting. And this is just gonna get some Rubio Monocoat. No, not cotton white. I think I might just go pure or something like that. To tell you the truth, I have absolutely no say in the finishing. That's all my wife's decision. But hopefully you guys got something out of this video. You can see now how easy and quick it is to construct cabinet boxes, how to make them hanging for floating vanities, all that good stuff. I linked all the products and tools in the video description. You can go down there and check them out. There's also a link to my Patreon page where if you sign up, you get access to watch all my videos early with no ads, which is kind of cool, as well as some other 
nice little perks and bonuses. So you might want to check that out. All right. Now where am I going to put these until I install them? 